Hello guys and welcome back to another prototyping video. I've taken the day off work to actually catch up on some work with the sim. It sounds a bit odd but that's what we're doing. Today we're doing the single control column, the base part and there's, there's actually two versions. Now this is the fixed base specifically for the 737 so the angles are all permanently fixed ready to go for the 737. So I think it's got like seven degrees forward slant and then it's got a maximum of 10 degrees aft, 10 degrees forward. It's all fixed in place. There's another version that goes back to the older version where you've got the actuator in, but that makes things a lot more complicated. Let's just get the basic design done. Cool, that was a bit of a waffle. Anyway, the base in two halves, small printer friendly. Whew. Got to join those two halves together and you can see that this time I've already inserted the M4 brass inserts there on the top. Those two are going to slot together and then we've just got some little M4 countersunk screws to hold the two parts together. So this is the plastic base. Now when I say the base, this is either going to need to be bolted down, which is why there's four bolt holes in the corner here. Because the forces involved, that small area footprint isn't going to be enough to stop it from tipping forward and aft. So unfortunately you are going to need a board for this to go on so it can help share the loads over the area. Now we've got our side braces and they're going to fit in left and right there. They're going to support the base of the control column. We're going to need to insert some brass inserts. Now, I've moved away from M4, and for the first time, I'm using M5 brass inserts, and that's because of the sheer loading that's going through these parts. There's our brass inserts all fitted. So these can slot into position into the recesses that have been built in there. That's all to help with the structural strength. There's the base unit done. We can put that to one side. So these are the force field tongs. They've got a recess for a 608 bearing and each one just needs the bearing pushed in. What we need to do is put more brass inserts, which I forgot all about, into the force feel bases. Now these are M4, so we're going to flip them over, bring in the soldering iron, and quickly put these in. And I think I've just noticed there's a bit of support material in both, so we're missing a hole in both positions. You may just be able to see that on camera there. That little circle, that needs to come out. So we can flip these over and we can put the tongs on. And you've just got to make sure that the upper tongue, so the bearings all face down. So that one must go in that direction. And what I mean by that is when you put these on, you can see hopefully there's a little raised portion there and the bearing needs to sit on that so it doesn't interfere and then the tongue goes over the top and that way it's lifted off the surface by about 0.4 of a millimeter so they don't actually contact the back plate here. Repeat for this one. Yes, they go on nice and easy. Then we've got the force lever levers. And we need to put some long screws through there. So I've just realized I've only got M4 by 40 millimeter dome head screws and they need to be countersunk. Let me just check around to make sure they haven't come in yet. We'll continue with these because I can't find them. Uh, that's not ideal. Now I don't know if dome heads are gonna work because I'm not sure if there's enough clearance between this part and the frame that it sits against. In the meantime though, we will put some bearings in. Now these are 6001 bearings and they just push in top and bottom. It doesn't matter if they're a little bit loose. As you can see, 
This one is falling out on my finger here because they'll be held in when they go against the units. So in comes the control column and I dropped it and it's sheared clean in half on the bottom of the yoke here. That's why there's no yoke handles anymore. I'm gonna feed the wires through the drill guide. Now, the drill guide goes on there and it needs to be 90 degrees to the head. So to ensure that this drill guide goes in the right place, I'm just gonna grab a tape measure and I'm gonna line it up along the axes of the side of the yoke head here. It's a nice straight line and then we can just turn the drill guide until it's 90 degrees, they're all in line and that should be good enough. And then we can just drill those four holes. Now these are, these are supposed to be 12 millimeter holes but I'm gonna just pre-drill them with a four millimeter drill bit. You take the drill guide off and these are going to go in place but we need to make the holes a lot bigger. In fact I said 12 millimeter. I think the bottom one is 8 millimeter by the looks of it there. So now I'm changing out for an 8.2 millimeter drill bit. I'm going to drill the bottom hole out. So I don't have a 12 millimeter drill bit, but I do have a spade bit, and we're gonna see how this goes. So now I bought some pre-cut M12 rods. Now these are going to be too long, they'll have to be cut down, but they just came in this handy pack from Amazon. It was actually cheaper to buy 10 than it was to buy one from a different vendor. In fact, these are, these are low quality, they're just zinc coated, they're not A2 stainless, but they'll do the job. Next up, we've got the braces that go on the side of the unit here, and They've got little nodules that fit in and it just makes it so much easier to print this flat on this face on the printer and then add the nodule in afterwards. Otherwise you'd have all that support material on the top. So when you put these support assemblies on, you've got to make sure that the plain topped one goes on the left hand side of the stick and the geared one is going to go on the right hand side because that's where the hall sensor is going to be and they're going to go on like that. I need to go and find some eight millimeter rod. I'll be back in a second. Off camera, I've cut a bit of eight millimeter rod and I've put a lock nut at one end. I'm now gonna feed on the 608 bearing. Gonna put the noggin in and I'm gonna push that whole assembly through like so. And that's how it's gonna look on that side. That's now going to go into the control column base. We've got the black side. That's going to go on there. We've got another 608 bearing. And finally a lock nut. So this next bit, oh, got my glasses on still. I've been cutting metal off camera. So safety reasons, I put glasses on. They're still on there because we're about to cut some more metal on camera. Here we go. So we're gonna put pre-build the unit now, ready to go into the frame. Just gonna put our 6,001 bearings in left and right. I am gonna put an M12 rod through the center. There we go. Then we've got our force feel units. They're gonna go over. And 
Okay, so now we need to build the force field unit spring bars. They're the two bars that go through the force field tongs here and put the torque loading onto the control column. What I'm going to do is got my M8 threaded rod and all I'm going to do is put it between the two white tongs, these two white parts here. And it just needs to be slightly shorter than that is two distances. And we we'll get to cut it now. I need two of them. So we've got our rod, that's going to go through the tongs like this and we're going to put some springs on there. Now, these are my all sorted spring selection boxes I've collected. That is the kind of one we want. So we're going to go for this size spring. I don't think it's going to work. What I actually need is this size spring in a 1.2 millimeter format. So it's not as strong, this is super strong. It needs to be this size, but smaller. And a, a couple of these would have been ideal. That I haven't got. So we'll have to wait for them to come on order. But in the meantime, I can then see if this design is gonna work anyway. And we're gonna feed those rods into the tongs. So I'm just going to back these inner nuts off so we can see what distance we need. You can see that we've got one tiny spring in the middle. Then I'm just going to tighten up these nuts against the tongs. That should set the correct distance. And then we can put our lock nuts on the outside. So I'm going to take this side off here so we can feed the assembly in. Aha. And that means I can just put that through there. I'm going to take that bearing out. We can lay it down, put those screws back in. Okay, now to stop this unit from falling over, you can see I've got another M12 rod here. Okay. Now before we can put the bearing in this end, we need to put a spacer in. That's gonna fit in there. Then the bearing. The same for this side. So we've got the spacer. And where have I put the bearing? There it is. I need to find some M12 nuts. Now these should be lock nuts, but as I know, I'll be taking this apart very shortly. I'm just gonna use standard nuts. That makes them nice and easy to go on. There we go. So there's our control column. It's got a slight. Okay. Now I remember this from the previous version. This was a flaw with the first one, was that the tongs aren't long enough. 
and the tube catches the spring. But that's an easy fix. We just make those tongs longer to clear the tube assembly. I have to say, <laughs> that tiny little spring in there is doing a really good job. This is really quite hard to push. I think it's the, the right tension, unbelievably. I would be happy with that. So ideally, this needs to move 10 degrees forward and 10 degrees back from this position. If you look at it side on, you will notice that it's slanted the seven degrees aft or forward uh, that the real aircraft is. These parts here down here, they're for the stops to limit it to 10 degrees forward and backwards. But they're, they're not actually gonna work anymore because they're for the mechanical version, I've just realized. Right, before I go contemplating changing the design all over, let me go get a hall sensor to fit in this part here. I've got my hall sensor pot here. There's quite a few in here actually. Oh, there's lots. Okay, so mounting plate and screws. So I actually buy these every time they come up. They're average about 20 quid, 20 pounds, 20 euros each. But every now and then you can buy three for 20 euros and that's what I do. Hence, every time that package comes up, I buy a set of three because I do use a lot of these hall sensors. And these screws are tiny. So the first job is to put the plate onto the hall sensor. This is where big fingers meet tiny screws. So now I need two M3 brass inserts. That means that can go in there like that. So I haven't printed the gear. I'm gonna close the cameras down and get back to you once that's done. Okay guys, we're back. The gear has been printed and the gear should just fit over the end here in position. As you can see now, it would take the read in from the main case. So I think the design works. I mean, it really is quite strong. That is a big spring. It's a little spring, but it's very powerful. However, oh, this can be, it's over complicated for what it needs to be. I think what we're gonna do is, we're gonna remove these white tongs which means we can remove the 12 volt, uh, the 12 volt, the 12 millimeter bar at the base. So those tongs can be part of the frame. That means we lose the bearings. We can get rid of two sets of bearings left and right. We can get rid of that bar there. We can make these tongs longer. The whole unit becomes a lot more compact and we could even lose the height of it. We could shorten it down to the length of the tongs here in the middle. So we could actually gain another two inches, 50, 50 millimeters in, in less height. Also the hall sensor now, because we're not having to actuate this, this rod here, that's, that's what the difference is. That linear actuator used to move this whole assembly up and down for the backwards and forwards for the trim. That's not needed, which means we can take the hall sensor back out of here and now mount it to the, actually hard to the frame. So again, it's less parts to print and it all just becomes a lot simpler. That's my plan for tonight. Tomorrow morning, we'll come back to the table once it's printed and we'll reassemble and assess. Until next time, guys, I'll catch you later. Clarky out.